Hey guys, welcome back to the most absurdly long, drawn out, and delayed guitar kit build project of all time. Uh, I said I was going to get some custom hardware cut for the back of this. Uh, the plates haven't been able to do that yet, but uh, I've run out of patience. So, what I'm going to do is start assembling this thing. Uh, so, I'm going to just bring the camera in and you can watch me assemble it, and then uh, we'll test it out when it's all done. So here we go on the assembly process. So I'm starting out by getting my tuners put in place here. I'm just making sure that they all kind of line up and that I got all of them. And then there's a little hole in them to, uh, to put a small screw through. So I do that to make sure that they're all lined up at the appropriate angle. Once I've got that done, I go ahead and throw the collar on the front. I just put it in by hand at first and then I go in and tighten them all with a wrench. I believe it was an 11 millimeter. Uh, afterward to make sure that everything's seated in there properly. So that's really all you have to do for the tuners. They're pretty straightforward. Next I move on to putting the plate on for the truss rod cavity. Um, this one I have to drill the holes for. The plate comes with holes in it but the neck does not so I just put it on there and do a quick little pilot and then I go back with the drill and deepen up the holes so that I can screw it in place. Really pretty straightforward. Uh, you do need some some reasonably small screwdrivers to handle all these screws. Um, a normal like number one would probably work but smaller is easier. Now I'm drilling for the uh, strap buttons. There weren't any holes there beforehand so I just make sure I find the middle for the bottom one and uh, just the top of the horn for the top one there. And then I screw them in. Don't forget about the piece of felt or leather to uh, keep them from loosening off when you put them on and to protect the finish. Next I'm putting in a, the tailpiece, or the pegs for the tailpiece rather. Use a piece of wood when you're hammering these down. Don't use a sledgehammer. I couldn't find my normal hammer, so I'm using a sledgehammer. But uh, yeah, just be careful about it. Use a piece of wood so you don't mar up the surface of them too much. And so that you don't accidentally smash your guitar. That would not be, well it might be fun, but probably not. So I'm using a brush to do that. And now I'm screwing in the posts for the stop tail. Those you can just tighten in by hand. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. This is the plate that's supposed to go on the switch. Uh, the switch thing is recessed there, and the plate doesn't fit. I can't explain that. Um, I guess screw quality control. Anyway, so I throw away the plate, obviously, because it's, it's ugly, it doesn't fit, and it's entirely pointless. And then I realized that the hole is not big enough to actually put the switch through. So I kind of reamed that out a little bit, just with a slightly bigger drill bit. Now I can put the switch on, put the washer in there, and the nut. Uh, I should have shielded that cavity, but I didn't, because I know that this is going to sound not stellar anyway. Next I'm putting in the pots. Uh, that one's pretty straightforward. The holes in them are the right size, except you can see that little tang on the side there. Yeah, there was no accommodation for that, so I had to drill little spots for those to go into. And there I was just quickly drilling out a, uh, a spot for the ground wire for the bridge, because there wasn't one of those either. So here I am running wires from the switch all the way over into the control cavity. I think you need, you need four of them, I believe. Um, but one of them is dual conductor, so by that I mean it's got a shield on it. So I use that as the ground, uh, which means I only need three wires in this case. So I'm just quickly pulling those through. This video is obviously sped up a little bit, I believe. Uh, I believe it's sped up to four times. So now I've got to strip the ends of the wire, get those ready to actually do some soldering. I've got a soldering station, which I heat up to about 700 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm using that to tin the backs of the pots here. Um, I always look up a wiring scheme when I do this stuff. I'm, I'm not good enough at it to really know where everything goes anyway. So really, look up a wiring scheme is, <laughs> is basically what I would say for that. Um, and make sure that your, your iron's nice and hot so that you can get the tin, um, your solder to be nice and shiny when you're done so that you know you've got a good solder joint. Keep in mind that these bigger things like the pots and the switches, when you're not just going onto the lug, when you're going onto the body itself for grounding, you're going to actually need a fair bit of heat, like you see me doing right now, to be able to get that to stick properly. 
so there I'm wiring in the, uh, the capacitor for the tone knob. Here I am trying to get the pickups to go into the cavities. The cavities aren't routed properly and the pickups are terrible. Um, so the tangs don't actually fit. So I had to bend them back under the pickups a little bit and then out again. That of course made it so that the tangs wouldn't line up properly with the pickup rings, but the pickup rings are junky plastic anyway, so I tried to direct mount the pickups. That was also a challenge, uh, as you'll maybe see, well you probably won't see how much of a challenge it was because the video is pretty quick, but I'm screwing the into the bottom there um, into a very weird surface at the bottom because of the way this was routed out, which didn't really make a lot of sense to me. The bridge pickup was okay, I got that hooked up, but the neck pickup didn't come with long enough wires so I couldn't run the control cavity to actually hook it up to anything. Here I put in the ground wire for the bridge, next I'll install the posts the same way I did for the tailpiece, and uh, screw them in there by hand after. I'll get the tailpiece and the bridge on there, those are basically just things that you drop on, and the dials, I'm sure you all know how to string up a guitar. The last thing was just hooking up the output jack, which is simply two wires. And, uh, and that's it. Alright guys, so this concludes our guitar kit build series. Here's the finished product. Sorry I, for the weird microphone here, I'm not using the lapel mic right now. Um, because I'm going to put this in front of the amp to demonstrate this thing. Uh, so I'm sure some of you were wondering if this was even going to be playable when I was finished with it. Uh, the answer to that question is, kind of. There are some definite problems. Uh, in fact, let me just take a moment to uh, to complain. So, obviously the neck fits into the neck pocket a specific way. I centered the bridge, as you would. Um, but the neck doesn't fit into the neck pocket straight. So, it's angled that way a little bit. Down. Uh, which means that the E string, the high E, over here, is kind of going off the edge of the fretboard a bit. Whereas the low E is, you know, a quarter of an inch um, further onto the fretboard than it needs to be, approximately. The pickups didn't quite fit into the pickup cavities, so I had to bend the tangs on them back and forth to get them in there. Uh, and the pickup cavities weren't routed out in a reasonable way, <laughs> I would say, which means that uh, when I went to direct mount them, of course, that was a bit of a mess, too. Of the plates, um, there being one for here and two for the back, zero fit correctly. I had every intention of making some new ones, but it got to the point actually fairly early uh, in this build where I, I just stopped caring. It's not really worth it. It's, it's not a very good kit. Um, the wires, I used only the wires that they gave me for this, because of course it's supposed to come with the appropriate amount. Um, the wires for the neck pickup weren't long enough to even make it to the control cavity. So, the neck pickup's not attached to anything. It's not even hooked up. So that about covers the problems, I think. Um, we talked about the rest of them in the unboxing video. The, uh, the dull solder joints and stuff like that. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Obviously, everything's super low quality, but, uh, but yeah, those are the things that were drastically wrong. So what I'm going to do now is um, put this microphone in front of the amp on a little tripod here. And we'll do a quick demo of the bridge pickup because it's the only pickup literally the only pickup that's hooked up to anything. So, let's do it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
see there the volume works fine the tone does pretty much nothing um, barely noticeable which isn't all that surprising kind of my bad I didn't bother to intonate this um, <laughs> and I'm not going to I'm, I'm actually going to uh, probably move on from this now to do I don't know I've gotten a few requests from a for a relicking tutorial and this is a nitrocellulose lacquer so hey why the hell not um, we'll do some relicking technique tests on this because, I mean, it's not like I'm going to play it. Uh, and, yeah, we can we can see how some of that stuff works. So, here's kind of a final look at it. You know, the, the finish turned out pretty decent. Can't really complain about that. Nice flame maple, good gloss. Uh, I didn't bother to trim the string ends. <laughs> so, yeah, the uh, that worked out, but I don't know. For the amount of work that it would take to render this really usefully playable, I'm just not willing to do it. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the series and found it useful. If you're working on building a kit guitar, I mean, all the same principles apply, except you'll probably have, you know, something that's usable at the end of it, I would hope. And uh, all the finishing techniques and everything, those apply to, you know, any bare wood guitar that you're using. and and any flame maple veneer even if it's you know a decent one and not one that's paper thin like this so again hope it was useful or i hope at least that you enjoyed it as always thank you for watching if you have any questions let me know in the comments below i'm sorry i didn't go more in depth with the wiring stuff but hey i'm not very good at it and uh would have been kind of silly to only wire up one pickup for a wiring tutorial so yeah. um so yeah that's about it as always thanks for watching and have a good one. See you next time.